Today I'm looking at the top three ratchets in their class. You got Pure Brawn, you got Brains, and you got Budget. Each one of these excel better than anything else in their class, and I'm going to show you why, and we're going to put them to the test. Want to see them? Keep watching. So if you've been looking for 12 volt ratchets, you've seen these three likely. And each one excels better than anything else in their own class. As far as budget goes, we start out with this Husky. This Husky 12 volt just cannot be beat for what it offers at the price point. Absolutely. This Makita right here, as far as features go, it is designed and has features that no other cordless ratchet on the market has. This thing excels as far as features, brains, speed, it just does. And as far as just brute force power is this Milwaukee Fuel. Nothing is power, more powerful than this guy right here as far as cordless ratchets. So one of the most important things is how much these actually are going to set people back. And the winner of that is this Husky. This Husky right here, MSRP is fully kitted with a battery, a charger, battery is concealed in here. It's not a removable battery, but it's $79 MSRP. However, it's constantly on sale. I think I, pay, I paid $50. I paid $49.95. To over two years ago when it came with a bunch of sockets. I don't think it comes with sockets anymore, but still, for sub $80, this thing is phenomenal. Coming up next is the Makita. The Makita Bear Tool is about $139. Um, with the kit, with the battery charger stuff like that, it's $189. And then at the very top of the scale, we have the Milwaukee Fuel that comes in at $239 Bear Tool, $329 with the kit. You could, I could have bought six of these for one of those, or I could have bought two of these for one of those. So, as far as budget goes, this one right here is the king. Now, the next thing that's really important is speed, and this was the most important feature to me, is I just wanted something that when you're taking off something like a valve cover gasket, a transmission pan or something, you can just whip those off as fast as possible. And the Makita just dominates all these others. And it has an advertised speed of 800 RPM, no load. Actually, I've tested it out and I'll show you here. We'll do a test in a second. I tested it out to about 780 is the highest I've ever got on a fresh battery. Um, but it gradually goes down as the battery drops and it drops down to about 400 RPM. The Milwaukee starts out at 200 and drops down to about 100 RPM at low RPM. So this one's 400 at low, RP, at low battery and this one drops down to about 100 at low battery. The Husky is about 240 at a full battery and drops down to about 120. So they almost, every single one of these half when the battery kind of drops down. So let's do a speed test between the Makita and the Milwaukee. We just got a chunk of all thread here. This would signify taking out a long bolt. We'll put the stopwatch on for no reason, but you can see the speed difference between both of them. Ready, go. You can see how much slower it is. The Makita just barely won it. This one has a feature where it actually speeds up. And I can show you that. We can throw the uh, contact meter on it, the contact tachometer. It peaked out at 467 RPM. This thing speeds up 
once it gets under load. Impressive. The Makita under load when a max is 753, under a light load. But you can see that they actually change speed just a little bit, and even the Milwaukee goes a little bit faster under load. I think we topped out about 208, 210. We'll do some torque testing to see how well they handle torque. Right, Makita? Now the last most important feature is sheer torque. The ability for this thing to snap bolts loose. And the Milwaukee just dominates. It does 55 foot-pounds. And it does it. It does it. Nope. Well, it has a little bit of struggle. But it does 55 foot-pounds of just, you don't have to move the tool, just breaks it free. It takes a, Sometimes it stalls out, but it does break it free. Both of these do 35. 35.7. 35.4. Did it. It can actually do, I've gotten it up above 35. One thing you'll notice about any one of these, this one will stall out, they'll all stall out, is there's a stroke in here as they stroke around there. And if you catch them at the peak of that stroke, they don't have enough momentum to slam the bolt off. So sometimes you gotta take the, the socket off, especially when you're at max peak and just give it a little bit of a rotate. You see how that just wobbles back and forth and maybe make sure it ends up on the other side. And then generally you're good. Yeah. 35.9, 35.1, Husky. Got it. Husky, got it. The Milwaukee, we'll throw the Milwaukee up to, it's uh, 55 pounds. 55 .8. 55.1. There it goes. See, it's at the peak of its thing, so you can pull it off a little bit, rotate it. There it goes, I got it. Another one of the most important things is the features a tool has. We want features. In today's technology with electronics and stuff like that, we want as many features as possible because it makes our life easier. And you take stuff like the Milwaukee and the Husky, and they just don't have as many features as the Makita. The Makita went back to the drawing board and designed a ratchet completely unique to any other ratchet on the market. Every single other ratchet market on the market has essentially just taking, taken a 30 year old air ratchet and put an electric motor in it. There's really no difference. They use the same paddle switch. They use everything else is just the same, um, same two finger direction change on the back, just like the air ratchet, nothing different. They just decided, hey, how do we make more money off of old technology, put an electric motor in it, boom, done. Makita completely redesigned the ratchet, and you may look at this for a second and think, oh no, it's just, it's just the same as these, no. Biggest feature is the adjustable direction single finger, just like you would find on all modern ratchets. Adjust the direction, one finger. Get a, a, under the car, boom, one hand. You can just sit there, one hand, forward, reverse, no problem. You try to do it one in one of these without supporting the tool on something, possible, nearly, let's see if we can do it with this one. Nope, I gotta set it down. Now I can change the direction. I have used that feature so many times. Next thing is paddle switches on these. This one has a modern switch, just like you'd find on a drill or any other power tool. But it's also guarded. It feels nicer to use this plastic switch than it does these cold metal switches. It really does. These do feel cold when you grab them. Everything else is plastic. But when I set this in my toolbox, it's guarded. No worries. No worries. I set these ones in my toolbox all the time. Put them in your tool bag. 
always coming on. So you say, oh, just lock it. Of course. Well, Makita thought about it. They put that right on the back of your thumb and it's effortless to move. It's guarded. You never bump it. Beautiful. But they also, if you did leave it off and you put this in your tool bag, it has an automatic shut off where it only runs for about 60 seconds and then it just automatically shuts off. So if you did forget about it and it did something did push on it, no big deal. These ones both have switches on the bottom, but they're not easy to use. They really aren't. This one right here, I've done this many a times where I pulled this out of the tool bag. I put it on a bolt, go to pull the bolt. Oh, I got it locked. You cannot flip it easily without taking it off the bolt, flipping it over, grabbing it with two hands, and getting in there and unlocking it. Makita. Awesome. This one, great. Next thing, all these right here are just ratcheting heads. Ratchet head, ratchet head, you know. This is a sprag clutch, toothless. Toothless sprag clutch in there. Beautiful, smooth, gearless. It's just super smooth when you're actually using it as a ratchet. It's just beautiful. No, you know, these ones have so much force that this is just a 42 tooth and it's so tight, it hasn't loosened up that, you know, it's one of those ratchets where you have to hold the socket because otherwise it just tighten loose and tighten loose. The bolt goes nowhere until you, I know it is an electric ratchet, but you still should break them loose. Features are just phenomenal. Makita has also decided, I mean, they originally, came out with them or Bosch came out with this internal battery design right here but they gave it up 15 years ago because it just makes the handle so bulky and I mean just look at this handle this is just like you grab a drill beautiful I can manipulate this thing anywhere under there two fingers this one is almost a pound lighter than this and even if this isn't the extended one it only reduces about four ounces so it's about three quarters of a pound lighter than this beast and it's about the same as this one. This is just a lot smaller. So feature-wise, Makita just knocked it out of the park. I can't believe I forgot about almost the most important thing. And that is a replaceable anvil. They are the only one in the industry with a replaceable anvil. So I can go from my 3 8 down to my quarter, just like that. Just that easy. And we can start doing all of our quarter-inch fasteners. No problem. And it has one more thing that's an Easter egg. And they actually even list this in the manual the pass-through design. Right now, it's only set up to fit a 13, but I guarantee they've thought about making sockets with the pass-through that would fit this. So you could do that. Impressive, impressive, impressive. It's feature-wise, there's none, no other ratchet that I've ever seen touches the features or the uniqueness that Makita put into this tool. Now I got both those bolts torqued up to 75 foot-pounds. And there is a trick that you can use if these things won't bust it free. And I can make this one do 75 foot pounds. And I can make this one do, I could probably make this one do over 75 foot pounds. Because right now it would not, no matter what you do, it won't remove 75 foot pounds. You can, however, it chews up the bolt. You can rev it up and jam it on. It's the same as in a car, where if you put it in neutral, gas it, you drop it into drive, you do a neutral drop off boom the makita will do it as well so we buy these tools for one major reason and that is to be quicker and more efficient at working and there is a figure that was invented a long time ago that shows you that and that is horsepower horsepower in this scenario shows us how much work we can get done in a given amount of time we know we only need to know two figures you need to know the actual foot pounds of torque and the RPM at which you can do it, and that'll tell you how much work a tool can do, or an engine can do. Um, this one's 35, 55, 35 foot-pounds. That's its ability to loosen a tightened bolt, a bolt tightened to that spec. So you take this, a bolt tightened to 35 foot-pounds, it can loosen a, that. However, it takes a lot less torque to loosen a bolt than it does to actually tighten it. So it actually only takes about 28 foot-pounds. It's usually about 80%. So it actually only takes 28 foot-pounds to loosen a 35 foot-pound bolt. It takes 44 foot-pounds to loosen a 55 foot-pound bolt. These produce roughly those figures. This can only put out about 44 foot-pounds. This can actually only put out 28. Same with that, 28. We have our average RPM. Now I took the average between the no load and the, uh, the lightly loaded, and this one averaged about 350 RPM. The 
Milwaukee did 205 and the Makita did 742 RPM. So we can plug that into the millions of calculators online. It's just a, it's an easy multiplication to figure out the horsepower and, and horsepower depends on just the torque and the RPM. Pretty basic, the faster you spin it, the actually the more horsepower you can get, the more work you can get done. Calculator, the Husky. 1.9 horsepower. It can do 1.9 horsepower. So we go over to the Milwaukee. 1.7. The Husky can actually do more work than the Milwaukee. Yes, it doesn't have that initial brake free torque, but it has speed. So you will get more done with the Husky than you would with the Milwaukee. Now we step up to the Makita with a blazing fast speed of 742 RPMs and it produces about four horsepower four horsepower more than double of any of these so in one hour or even in one minute but we'll take one hour you'll get twice the work done with this than you would this or this so hmm so i bought a lot of ratchets to come to this decision to get to these and i bought these three even with my own money i bought more but they were gone because they offered nothing special these, however, stood out to me as something, they offered something that set them apart from everything else on the market. But over the last two years of using some of these, two years, over a year, um, about a year, there's one that I like the most, and it's the one that every time I reach in my toolbox, I want to grab, and it is my favorite by far, and it is the Makita. Absolutely. I would not trade this one for anything. I did not own the battery platform before I bought this. I bought this with the batteries, everything. I do not own any other 12 volt tools from Makita, but I bought this just for this and I'm happy I did and I'm happy to keep that battery platform just for that. You know, I have other Milwaukee tools with this battery platform that I love the other tools. This, however, is not my favorite. It is a great tool though. It's, it's fantastic for those heavy duty bulky bolts you know maybe if you're doing suspension work or something else like that where you couldn't just reach up and just grab your impact you you actually needed to ratchet yes then i would grab this the the compactness of this is awesome either one of these under the engine compartment inside the engine compartment and around stuff phenomenal about the only benefit this has in the engine compartment is the extended neck and that's why i got the extended one because maybe you could reach down in there when i find that i can reach this one almost just as far because it's a pound lighter. I can reach this one in there almost the same distance, but this is my favorite, but you would be happy with any, any one of these would make you happy. I'd love to know you guys' opinion. I'll put links to all these down in the video description. Leave me a comment, tell me which one your favorite is, and have a good one. Drop it. Get, get it. Get the tree. Drop it, get the tree. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> you wanna let it go?